Hello, it's Debs de Vries here on behalf of the Eden Room, and I'm coming to you with a unique series, specially commissioned and recorded for and by the Eden Room on ceremony and Beltane. So as I'm recording, we're coming up to the 1st of May, which is the Celtic festival that I'm referring to, the Fires of Belt. And uh, forgive if my pronunciation is a bit old fashioned, <laughs> but Beltane is what I've always known it as since I was little and it's a fire festival. Um, if you go back to the last two videos, you'll understand a little bit more about the festival itself, about its origins and about why it's, I, I, I want to promote the idea of being in ceremony and why preparing for ceremony is so valuable. But this particular video is just focused on the ceremonies and the ceremony itself, how to create a sacred space and some simple ideas, particularly in the times of, um, of lockdown restrictions that you can do either on your own with a friend or a small handful of friends or family. When I'm preparing for ceremony, one of the things that has to be considered, absolutely has to be considered, is preparing the space for it. Sacred space, sacred doesn't mean that it's, um, a I'm not talking about a religion particularly, although all religions do clear sacred space. It's about setting a space in which the energy that you've called in, you're collaborating with, can run most easily. So if you're going to choose somewhere to do your ceremony, outdoors, of course, is brilliant. Um, if the weather's going to allow that, then consider what that space is going to hold. So you might be gathering objects and I'll come on to that. You might need to make sure that it's safe, that it's particularly if you've got people with you that might trip or fall, that there aren't big rocks or roots or things around. But more than that, you want to consider that you've sanctified, made sacred in some way the space. So if it's in the house, it could just be clearing, literally removing clutter, um, dust. I'm not saying anybody's got, got dust. It's not such a bad thing, but and stuff generally. So first of all, you want to start with a clean, uncluttered space. You might want to create a small altar, a little table or even a rock. If I'm doing ceremony outside, I'll often just find a, a tree trunk or a rock, or I might take something with me, um, a small portable altar, for example. So once you've got the space clean, you've got to think about the atmosphere around it and there's a number of things that I use to create sacred space. Sprays, you could make an air spray so that helps on um, a higher vibrational level and if you've got essential oils such as frankincense, rose and, la and lavender they'd be quite good ones. Um, because it's Beltane and it's earthy I'd probably add something resiny so I might change the lavender for vetiver or something quite grounding. That's just one option. You could make a spray, purified water, three to five drops of your favorite essence in a bottle about that and spray the area. Another thing that I use a lot, I'm still a big fan of Californian white sage. So um, here's some of my smudging shells. Obviously with children around, we're super, super careful because they don't always recognize hot and burn. Um, it doesn't, you don't need fancy shells, but you do need something safe to hold your smudge in. I'm using a stick here, but actually what I tend to do is just I peel a bit off. You'll notice most um, witchy people, practitioners, have burnt <laughs> nails because we're always catching ourselves on something. So safety first. Um, I've got some Paolo Santo wood, which I also use in there. And another thing that I like to purify myself and the area with is resins. I love resins. They need to be burnt on a charcoal circle in a heat proof container. Do not touch it. That charcoal gets very, very, very hot. Um, I've got some beautiful Boswellia, high quality Omani frankincense here, which I'll probably be using on the 1st of May, which you can smell it. It's quite lemony. It's a resin, so it gets very, very hot and sticky when it's burning. Um, but you can easily buy solid metal. It's quite good as long as you're not going to touch it. So you want that on a heat proof plate burner to put your um, 
your charcoal disc in, you light the, hold the disc up in a tweezer and light it. Once it's fired up, you can put your incense on it. So that kind of solid incense, an air spray, or my preference is California white sage. I will purify, I might have some incense burning because that's my, that's air. So I'll have air as one of the elements honored. This is a frankincense incense stick, which again has its own burner to go into. Careful, if you're going to put these anywhere and there's children around, make sure they're well out of touch because they get pretty hot. And when people get a bit altered in ceremony, you can forget what's around you. So purification with water, that was the spray, or you can have a bowl of water handy as well. Something I'll always have in ceremony is a crystal or 10. <laughs> you can get a bit crazy about crystals, but I'll probably be working with this citrine um, for Beltane because oh, it's just so much about the fire energy of self, the solar plexus area. So that'll be given a special cleansing and brought to the outdoor altar. And those are the main things you're thinking about having a clear uncluttered space, cleansing the air, um, blessing the land. I would probably use feathers at some point as well. So here's one that was recently gifted to me by Mother Nature. Um, it's a very special story about this that I might get to tell one day. And I would probably bring, almost definitely bring flowers, something natural. And again, it's looking a bit tatty now, but that's been on my altar that may blossom for a couple of days. And if you have children as well, it's nice to encourage them to go and look. They bring, you know, a dandelion or some daisies or, or a little bit of hawthorn. It's just beautiful. Just encourage them to come and, and decorate in their way. Preparing yourself. So when you step into a sacred space, you can smudge your, your own energy field or you can spray it or you can use the incense around you. But come in mindfully. I'm always barefoot. I wouldn't recommend it because people step on stuff, but I, my feet are very um, used to that. And maybe wear something that makes you feel special ceremonial. I'm wearing peacock feathers at the moment, and I do wear these for ceremony. Again, we're honoring self, make it special. Now, once you've cleared your space and you've introduced the flowers and the scents and the crystals, if you have any awesome, pebbles that you or the children might have found or some flowers on your altar you're going to you're going to determine ahead what you want your ceremony to be about now it is a land honoring time so five suggestions that you can either do on your own or involve family and friends in are bring some bulbs to plant and as you plant those bulbs you can set an intention for them to grow and for your intention to go in with them. So a happy summer or su success in, a, in some endeavor. And the children can be encouraged to start thinking. So it's a teaching in aligning our thoughts with our actions. Ceremony brings that potential to us. So planting bulbs is a lovely one. Um, another one is making an offering to the land spirits. So if you're if you have a favorite tree or shrub in, in the garden or in a field near you, you could just sit quietly and ask to feel the being of that tree, the diva, the pattern of that tree, the, the dryad, whatever it is. You could do that by water as well. And you can bring an offering to them. So some cacao, a handful of nuts, a little crystal. Maybe if you've got children, they find something pretty could even be something they value themselves, you know, um, a little crystal or a toy. Uh, let them be the judge of that. I used to spend hours as a little girl making dance floors for fairies out of broken pottery. That was my thing. Um, so that's the second idea is that you can make an offering to the land and the spirits of the land. The third one is to leave something for the fairies. So that's pretty much my my innate tradition nobody had to teach me that and the fairy folk disappeared from our sight pretty much quite a long time ago when our density was too heavy for them to live around but they exist 
And I've seen them as packets of blue light. I've seen them as um, almost, you know, little figures with uh, beautiful leafy colors and wings. I don't see them very often, but I can sense them. And it's good to take something they like, um, they love flowers and traditional offerings of milk and honey. Um, not that they actually, it's, it's the offering, it's the, the gesture of us saying we respect you and the fairy kingdoms are partially responsible for holding together some of the energetic constructs. Um, so small beautiful things, shells, um, little pieces of, um, of, of fruit, all of these things can be placed on a dish or a bowl and again with children particularly it's lovely they can offer them to the fairies and if they want to talk about the fairies or they don't think they exist it kind of doesn't matter it's just about a connection that actually is deep in our dna through our dna to a kingdom that we can't see but we can sense it's there so that's three things offering to the fairies now beltane's a fire festival and traditionally two huge bonfires would be lit and People will go through the middle of this passage, one to burn things off and one to bring heat to the new intention. But you could do something um, with candles. You could have two candles lit and again, safely and at a high space, you could walk through the passageway between the two candles. And as you walk past, you can decide what you want to let go of. And you could even write that on a piece of paper and burn it or bury it later and with the other one you can decide what you want to energize now I had five I always remember four pretty well oh yeah yeah another one to do which is both fun and instructive is some divination now divination is an innate skill that we all have it's not fortune telling it's not decision making to divine is to use your subconscious mind to access symbols so it could be through cards um, or runes if you've got a set of runes and when you look at them they're showing you what I call the most available weather system for you how you play that weather system how you behave in it who you are in it it's like being given a set of cards how do you play them it's not a, a done for you decision like we have free will in every thought so may day is a great time i'll be using the transference healing animal magic cards which i actually do every day but i will do a special totem reading for myself on that day and again this will show me what's most potent and available to me and what i take from that will be if you like the essence of who i want to become not just who I am now, but who, what's the highest vibration of that that I could embody and become. So just to recap, one, prepare sacred space, either with sprays, smudging, frankincense, clear, clear the space, decorate your space, whether you've got a little altar made from a tree trunk or you've just found a lovely rock you wanna be by. Um, you might want to, if you are a crystal lover, choose the crystal, cleanse it beforehand and bring that with you. Um, it just helps to amplify energy. If you've got feathers, you can, children can go and find feathers in, on the field. Just, I, I wash them gently in um, tea tree oil and, and, water, and water and a little bit of soap. And just give them a little wash and let them dry before I use them because they can carry tiny little mites and all kinds of dead stuff at the end, so. Um, You've purified, you've prepared, prepare yourself, get dressed up. It's May Day, flowers in your hair, glorious. Uh, I'm just not talking to girls, I know, but you know, glorious garb. And once you're ready for your ceremony, decide which ceremony you're going to do. You could do two or three, um, planting bulbs, making offerings to the fairies, connecting with the divas and the land spirits, could be just the soul of your garden, the soil itself. Um, fire, so instead of two bonfires, you might have two candles to de decode and recode you. And then lastly, divination. You could even create your own runes. And uh, that's 
one tradition that is so Nordic, it's one of the few traditions we in the West have that really goes back to our own roots. I love some rune casting. So you can go and check that out, I'm sure, or um, pop a message in the room and I'll talk to you about that. So for Beltane, um, traditionally you would do that the night before because the day actually starts at sunset the day before, but play with that. You've got 24 hours and let us know, maybe even take a photograph of your altar or your family or whatever, share with us how you stepped into Beltane, how you stepped into the next expression of yourself. We would love to hear that. So I'm Debs DeBrees, the midlife menopause mentor, shaman, priestess, and um, yeah, the, the wise elder. <laughs> Not always so wise, but I do my best. I hope that this Beltane expose, this special series has really lit you up, that your Beltane fire, and you're going to share that light with us all. Take care.